Stephanie Shea, founder of the platform Rejected Religion, and in collaboration with the Center for the History of Hermetic Philosophies and Related Currents, uh, known also as the HHP Center. I'm here today at the University of Amsterdam to talk with Manon Hedenborg-White. Dr. Hedenborg-White is a guest researcher here at the university's HHP Center and holds a PhD in the history of religions from Uppsala University in Sweden. Her doctoral dissertation has been published last year as a monograph by Oxford University Press titled The Eloquent Blood, The Goddess Babylon and the Construction of Femininities in Western Esotericism. In 2018, she obtained funding as principal investigator from the Swedish Research Council for the three-year postdoctoral project called Power Through Closeness, Female Authority and Agency in a male-led new religion. She is currently a postdoctoral research fellow at Södertörn University in Sweden, is review editor of the International Journal for the Study of New Religions, and is editor of Correspondences, Journal for the Study of Esotericism. Her research interests include British occultist Alistair Crowley, his religion Thelema and its later reception, ethnographic approaches to the study of esotericism, as well as issues of gender and sexuality in Western esotericism, occultism, and contemporary spirituality. An impressive <laughs> list of activities, to be sure, but recently added to this list is co-director of the Esotericism, Gender, and Sexuality Network, or in short, ESOGEN, that is a thematic network under the umbrella of the European Society for the Study of Western Esotericism, otherwise known as ESWE, located here in Amsterdam. And it is on this point that I'd like to start our interview today. So welcome, Manon. Thank you for being here today with me to talk a little bit about what you're doing. Thank you so much for inviting um, me. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to start by asking, what was the motivation behind the creation of the ESOGEN network? And what is its goal or are the goals of the network? Mm -hmm. You can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. So this all started as a, a joint endeavor um, from a joint discussion really between myself and uh, the other director of Essigen, who's uh, Christine Ferguson, who's a professor of English literature at the University of Stirling in the UK. And what we wanted to do was, you know, if you look at the history of Western esotericism, going back all the way to late antiquity, we can see that ideas about gender and sexuality fundamentally have been important to who's been involved in esotericism, who has uh, gravitated towards specific currents, why certain people, why men and women have taken on different roles. You can also see erotic or sexual imagery is something that's been really important to various esoteric mm -hmm. currents historically, alchemy of course being mm -hmm. a really central example. And also how esotericists have been involved in different ways in, in challenging and subverting dominant perceptions of, of gender and sexuality and trying to create new ways of understanding and, and relating to these, these issues. So we see the history of esotericism intertwining in these really fundamental ways with the, the history of alternative views of gender, of gender nonconformity, of utopian visions of reformulating sexuality, of celibacy, of free love, of polyamory, of the feminist movement, of eugenics, of all these different things. And I mean, the study of Western esotericism as an academic field is, is quite new. So there are obviously going to be some gaps in, in the research that we have. And there have been in recent decades some really amazing scholarly interventions in the area of esotericism, gender and sexuality. But we felt that there's still quite a lot to be yeah. done in kind of advancing the conversation about these issues. So we wanted to create an interdisciplinary platform for idea exchange and, and in the long term research collaboration around these mm -hmm. themes. And 
connecting both senior and junior scholars from a variety of disciplinary backgrounds working on this because I think it's really vital to bring in different areas of expertise, yeah. scholars working with different types of material, with religious material, with art history, with uh, mm -hmm. literature studies, with ritual studies, with anthropology, yeah. like being able to draw on all of these different competencies mm -hmm. is something that we see as, as really important. And I think from that, our ambition is in the long term that we're going to be able to um, create kind of a starting point for new research and for new Definitely. publications and, and projects. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds amazing. So very uh, interested to uh, to follow this to see where where it all leads. Mm -hmm. um, what types of activities or events will Esogen Network be uh, promoting or organizing? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is this uh, this event that we're calling the Esogen Symposium Esotericism, Gender and Sexuality, which is a one day international graduate student symposium geared towards MA and PhD students. Mm -hmm happening here at the University of Amsterdam. So that's April 16th, 2020. Yeah. That is the first thing that we're going to be doing. And after that, we are hoping to, we, there are uh, other plans for larger scale conferences mm -hmm. and workshop series in the pipeline as well. Mm -hmm. We're also hoping to produce joint publications, looking at this in a little mm -hmm. uh, longer perspective. and ultimately also uh, funding bids around this area uh, with involving different scholars, hopefully from different countries, different disciplines working together. Right. So with, with regards to the upcoming symposium on the mm -hmm. 16th of April, mm -hmm. can you uh, talk about the, a little bit more about the presenters mm -hmm. and what type, well, you have a theme of course, but mm -hmm. what are the presenters going to be talking about in mm -hmm. kind of in a nutshell of you yeah. know, the different diverse areas that people mm -hmm. can be talking about this this theme of gender and sexuality mm -hmm. and esotericism. Yeah, um, definitely. So we got a really good response and we intentionally kept the theme really broad. Yeah. I mean, it's basically the theme of the network. It's mm. just esotericism, gender and sexuality, <laughs> all time periods, all different types of material, right. because we wanted to source interest as widely as possible. But with, uh, with that being said, we do, we are going to be having thematic sessions organized around different focal points. So there's going to be one on queer and transgender issues, primarily focusing on contemporary esoteric currents. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a session on um, female agency, female leadership in modern esotericism as well. And there's also going to be a panel on sexuality and kind of uh, eugenics and mm. visions for creating the perfect human being in different ways, you oh, could say. Right both modern and pre-modern material. So we've got kind of a diversity of different areas. We've got everything from um, pre-modern, early modern Kabbalah to contemporary queer and trans esotericism other than human identities. <laughs> uh, and you know, everything from anthroposophy to grimoires to like um, ariosophy to right various other things. So I think there's going to be a real spread of different mm. topics and it's going to be interesting to see kind of what Definitely. comes out of that. Sounds like it's very broad, but a little yes. bit for anyone who's interested in any of these yes. topics. It's like <laughs> a little bit for everyone. Yeah.